Okay, hey everybody, it is Professor Kelsey Coase. Um, this is the Divination Academy. This is my series, uh, Magic, Witchcraft, Paganism, Basics. Um, and this class is on mirror magic. I'm really, really excited to do this one. I have a super, super strong affinity to mirrors. I love using mirrors. Um, and as usual, um, if you've been in class with me before, and if you haven't, I love using things that a lot of people actually think are controversial and that they think are taboo and that you shouldn't be using because I don't just, I just don't feel like that's a thing. I don't feel like anything is inherently one thing or another. I feel like everything is in duality because that is how I practice and that is who I am. Um, so again, my name is Professor Kelsey Coase, since we do have some new students here with us tonight. Um, I am a Grey Witch practitioner. I have been a solo practitioner until I started teaching here last year. Um, and I am a mystic as well, which means that I pull from all paths. I pull from everywhere. Um, so I pull from a lot of different pantheons. I look at almost every single culture I can get my hands on. I look at the accepted history and the not accepted history. Like I go from everywhere. Um, I also live in duality in that gray space. So I do not um, practice just from a light and love standpoint or even just from like a left-hand path. I really, really go right down the middle with you guys. Um, and that's really kind of how I sit and how I teach. Um, but I do teach all perspectives. Even if I don't believe in something, I'll tell you it's not my, my perspective, but I will still teach it because I want you to have all the information you can have. Um, so Divination Academy, since this is your first time here with us, we are a free pagan academy. We believe that that knowledge should be accessible and free to all. So everything that we do here is always free for you. Um, we'll never ask you for anything. We'll never, you know, I mean, we might ask you, but we like donation wise. Um, we have do have a donation page and everything like that. A lot of almost all of our classes are posted on YouTube for free for you guys to watch. The honey's putting the link in the in the comment section for you. Um, please check out the Facebook page. If you like what you see here, send us a message, DM saying that you want to enroll with us. When you enroll with us, you get access to our um, private chats. You get access to our private community. You get access to just this really awesome community to be a part of. You get access to certification programs for free. You get access to one-on-one -on -one oppression apprenticeships, just a bunch of stuff. Um, that link's in the chat as well for you. And then also our website, please check that out as well. Um, all of my study guides from class go there. All the study guides of other professors do go there. We have information and bios about our professors. Um, we have free resources there for you. Your student pages, when you get one, that's where they are. There's just a lot on there. Our newsletter that Honey does, which is amazing, ends up on there that you can also look at and read. Um, so please just check all of that out. So um, next, let's just get going into class. <laughs> so we're doing mirror magic tonight. Um, I am super, super pumped to do this one. Like I said before, I have a very, very strong affinity to mirrors. I have loved mirrors for, I honestly don't know. I've been incredibly fascinated to them. I get pulled into them magically, mentally, like emotionally, like mirrors are just this absolute portal of juicy power and wonderful reflection. Um, and it's just, they're, they're amazing. Scientifically, they do great things for you. Mental health-wise, they do great things for you. Magically, they do great things for you. But of course, they have this very negative connotation and this very negative stigma with them, which is a big reason why I'm teaching this class because I like to teach things to try to shatter that. Um, I don't know how often on social media I see people in groups telling people to not have mirrors in their home, to not have them near their altar, to not have them near their bed, that they're evil, their souls can be trapped in them, that a fae is going to come out and pull them out, a demon can get them out, and all these things with them. I mean, we have the Bloody Mary tradition. I don't even know how many myths there are out there of like monsters and legends where you stand in front of a mirror and you recite their name like three times and they come out and they scratch you or they get you. Um, I mean, with teenagers and middle schoolers, that's what they do at their slumber parties. Like it's that, that's how much we try to instill the fear of mirrors into us. Um, for me personally, I feel like the reason why that has been done is because of <laughs> mainly a specific religion in Christianity, but I feel like it's also, it was a way to try to not have us access this very, very powerful place that we have to access. We have the right way to access it very powerfully for a magical reason and magical purposes. And then also you have a way to do it from a spiritual awakening aspect, from accessing your inner child, from shadow work, from 
all of that, um, really, really getting deep into your whole soul, into your identity, um, and into your sacred contracts. Mirrors are fabulous for that with mirror work. Um, so we're going to talk about those two aspects of working with mirrors as well tonight. So there's a difference between mirror magic and mirror work. And we're going to talk about both of those and all the different ways that we can do that and we can harness them. Oh, so let's dig into the study guide because, you know, if you guys have some of you have been with me before, but um, I always do a little kind of like brief kind of what I'm going to do tonight. And then we really dig into my study guide. Um, I create study guides every single class. Um, I write these all out. I pull them from sort resources and things like that. Usually, like I said, I have images in here. I just didn't have time tonight. I will go ahead and add them um, and I will give an updated link for this. And then this also will end up as a blog post on my um, business page, um, Modge Podge Mystic. So you can also find it there too. And also on the divination um, website, I'll post it in the study guide section too, the updated version. So there, you'll, you'll find it in like a bunch of different places. Um, but again, mirrors, mirror magic. Um, we see them everywhere. We see them used in Hollywood. We see them used in fairy tales. We see them used all over the place. Um, and usually it's for vanity reason or beauty reason. Otherwise, you'll see it also for like that evil negative connotation and a negative spirit. But there's actually really, really a lot of different ways that you can use these guys. Um, mirrors can be used in magical ways in your practice and in your life. They create a connection. Um, the connection between mirrors is it creates a bridge with your identity, your reality of yourself, your self-image. Um, it can also create a bridge between other worlds. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more in depth as well. There's just so much that mirrors can do for you. Um, other spiritual methods of inner work available to us. There's so many now in the 21st century, but really mirror work and like anything that has like mirror magic to amplify or defend it's actually probably the simplest and most powerful that we actually have access to. So unlike the many a plethora of other pathways that we have for inner growth out there, you don't have to go and spend a lot of money. You don't have to sit here and spend hours and hours of time in these classes, in these workshops, doing these workbooks and this reflection and hours and hours and hours into therapy. I'm not saying you still don't do those things. Those things are still amazing. But this is just you don't have to spend a lot of money and it's not going to take a ton of time if you don't want it to and really how comfortable you get with it at first too. At first it can be kind of actually really daunting um, but once you get more comfortable with it it might be a longer time. Sometimes when I'm in mirror work I'm it, it can I might get lost in there for an hour or an hour and a half because of like the juiciness that's coming up for me and because I'm also doing it in a scrying method um, which is a little bit different. We'll talk about that too. Um, but this, like I said, like it's not going to cost you a lot of money. Mirrors are kind of everywhere. Um, you have a mirror on your phone. Like if you really, really want to use it and you really, really need it, like you have that capability to turn that camera around and, and use it as a mirror if you absolutely need to. You have compact mirrors. You have the mirrors in your, like they're literally everywhere. Um, so it's just a really, really simple um, and easy thing to get at. Um, they're really freely available. It's not like it's not hard to get. Um, they're also very practical. Practical. Um, you can have super small ones. You can use super big ones. It can be really, really whatever you need. You can use your bathroom mirror, the full length mirror. You can use, like I said, your mirror for compacts. All of that. So there's just that's a big reason why I feel like another reason why it's kind of been like shut down and given that negative connotation because it's so powerful and it's so freaking accessible. In ancient times and even now, you can still do mirror work and mirror magic, even using water as an alternative surface. If you still like after this class and after linear belt still can't quite shake that negative feeling, that distrust, that, that negative connotation, and you still kind of want to like go into the work, but you're not quite ready. Like an alternative is using water and water has been used for centuries. Like we have a written in text from 6,000, 4,000 years ago in Turkey, in Egypt. We have some written texts of it in, in Greece as well, of it being used that way. Um, so this is really something that I think that's another reason why it got this negative connotation. And we need to kind of like, we need to break free from that. We need to separate from it. Um, so... My own personal work with mirrors, like I said, I deeply, deeply, deeply love them, especially as a gray witch and a mystic who I thrive in the liminal space and I thrive in duality. Like mirrors are like 
an epitome of a liminal space. They create like their own pocket and place and time. It's this, it's this very reflective thing, this very mesmerizing way of a portal that they have to pull you in. Um, it's really the this portal into your own reflection that actually pulls you into a completely new and different reality, which is actually really what is happening when you look into a mirror from a scientific perspective as well. Every time we look into a mirror, it's actually our perspective of our reality that's being reflected back to us. When we're looking into a mirror, it is our eyes perspectives that's being reflected back to us in that mirror. So we are seeing our perspective of ourselves, not how others see us when we are looking into a mirror. So from a scientific perspective, like it's just like it gives you that as well. When you look at that, then from a spiritual magical perspective, it's actually like a very terrifying and also exhilarating thought because you really look at that and you break it down and it's what you're seeing in the mirror is actually both real and unreal at the same time. It opens up this mindset that really will allows you to like dive head first into this really deep portal of reflection for some of your deepest shadow works because you have to understand and grasp with that reality that what I'm seeing is not actually real because it's my perspective, but my perspective is real. So it's also real at the same time, which throws you deep into that liminal space. And it throws you very deep into that sense of duality. And that's why it's it's a deep, deep pool of reflection um, that really, really allows that reflection to amplify your shadow work. It refiles, refiles that allows that reflection to amplify how you see yourself, how you value yourself, how you interact with other people. Um, it amplifies your forms of divination and so many forms of spell work as well. So I'm going to jump into the chat, see if there's any questions. And then the next section we'll be talking about is magic mirrors as a tool. So we're really going to talk about mirrors like in a more of a magical sense here first and kind of how they can be used and kind of break down that evil connotation of some of the stereotypes that we see. And then we'll start looking kind of more into like magic work um, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty of spell stuff. Okay, so any questions? If you have any, you can throw them in the chat. Otherwise, you can definitely unmute yourself. You can raise your hand, whatever you would like. Um, if anybody has any questions so far, feel free to ask them. Oh, we had more people join since I jumped out. I am not always looking at the screen, by the way, if you are a new student. So if you throw something in the chat and I don't see it right away, that's because I'm literally jumping in and out so I can make sure that I'm looking at my notes and my study guides and I'm teaching everything that I want to teach. Um, so I jump back in also. I learned in the very beginning um, that if I'm looking at the chat, I get really distracted. Um, every time something pops up, I will respond to it instead of keep teaching. So it's just easier for me to not see it. Um, doesn't facing two murals towards each other make a portal? It can. Um, one of my most favorite things to actually do with putting two, two mirrors together is actually it, it creates a very powerful binding effect. Um, it also creates a very powerful like defense effect in that sense as well. Um, I have one spell in my study guide that is actually it's one of my favorites. Um, <laughs> um, from what I hear, I did it to one person and they said they actually felt like their shoulders and stuff were really tense and like pulled up for like the whole week that I had it like that for them. Um, but it's actually like you put the two mirrors in one on one and ideally in a hallway, but you have them up like a little bit higher facing each other. And obviously you have the target, a picture of the target or a name of the target or a sigil for the target or whatever you want for the target. But you put them on the mirrors, you have them facing each other in a hallway and a little bit up and that actually binds them in suspension, like as if they're hanging in the air. Um, and it, it, it's a binding, it's a very powerful protection binding. Um, so yes, it can create a portal to go through to each other. That is one one way that I have seen them used um, in, and it can also, yeah, also, like I said, in that reflection of defense magic. I hope that answers your question, Vincent. And then, honey, go ahead. Um, you will probably get to this later on, but uh, but since this, I don't think is necessarily a evil or bad connotation, it's just a beware type thing. Um, what are your thoughts on ghosts getting caught in mirrors after, like right after a person dies? It's I think this is mostly a southern thing, where people will actually cover with mirrors, um, to make sure that their the spirit or ghost of their loved ones doesn't get caught in it, so they can make a safe journey to the afterlife. 
I wholeheartedly agree with all of those cultural traditions. Um, it like I don't disagree with them. I definitely think that it's a possibility. Um, I just don't agree with like the fact that like when I'm saying like the native connotation is where it's like people are saying like that's the only thing that can be done with them. That's like the only thing that they can use. So don't use them because your soul will be trapped in them if you use them in that sense. But I can totally understand and like I totally agree with the fact that like a spirit, a soul, somebody who's not fully tethered could have the definite possibility of ending up getting trapped into a mirror because you can use mirrors as well in goetic magic for evocations. Um, and you can use them to trap entities in them if you would like. You can use them to bind. So it definitely is a thing that you can definitely do. Um, so I could see it definitely happening accidentally. Okay. Does that Thank answer you. your question? It does. Thank you. Okay, let's see. I think I see a couple more in the chats. Are mirrors technically interdimensional objects? <sighs> Vincent, it depends on your belief system with that. Um, I say yes. Um, that is my belief system with them. That is where I fall, where I definitely feel like mirrors are interdimension interdimensional objects. Um, and they definitely do have that capability. Um, I personally, like I have definitely been pulled places through them. Um with my permission. I've never had something happen without my permission. Have I felt the pull no lore to them prior to that without my permission? Yes. Um, but I've never actually like been pulled through without my permission. Um, but yes, they definitely do have that ability. They have the ability to definitely in uh, amplify astral projection. That's the reason why they've been used for that too, the talisman for that reason. Um, I that's how I view them. I definitely do view them as an option. Not every view, buddy views them that way. So it's really going to depend on how how you think about it and in your practice. Um, how do you feel about thrifting mirrors or using previously loved mirrors for, for this type of work? Um, so as with any magical tool, um, I say treat your mirrors like you would any other magical tool that you're going to be using. Um, if depending on the work that you're going to be using them for um, and depending on your own personal practice and your own personal beliefs. Um, if I pick up an object and I feel an energy that's like unwanted or unwelcome for me personally, I will go through and I will cleanse them. I will consecrate them. Um, I do not, um, program tools. I don't like doing that. Um, I feel like that's manipulative and controlling and I want to be able to harness the energy that the tools themselves have and that they will provide for me and I want that to guide me and amplify me I don't like to program my tools but I will charge I will cleanse them I will make sure that you know I spend time with them to get to know them um, I will do all of that with them if I don't feel any unwanted or unwelcome energy coming from an item um I will treat it like any other item and I will charge it and cleanse it when it feels necessary, when I'm going to be doing it with all the other items and tools that it is now part of the family with. Um, I will still then spend time with it right away and make sure that my energy mingles with its energy and we get to know each other. Um, but it's really up to the item for me. Um, you know, there are some times to where when you're bringing something in from somewhere else, you may actually end up getting some wanted energy from that, from that person previously from you. Um, they have may have some residual wisdom. They may have some res residual love. They may have some re res residual like collective guidance um, that they left in that tool for if another person picks up, like that was their intention. Um, so I don't automatically just want to wipe that away and get rid of that. Um, so I always sit with that tool and figure out how it feels. Um, so that's what I would do with mirrors here. Um, that is that is how I would sit with them, feel with them. Is a mirror more like a box or more like a door or is it up to your mindset? So it's going to be up to your intention. Um, that's what I will say with that. You can use it both as a mirror, um, like it more as like a box, because I do actually have a, some spells in there that actually are specifically using a mirror as a box to box them in, to completely enclose them in. Um, oh, um so that is that is one way to kind of look at it. Um, also with the intention of a mirror being a door, um, that's another way that you can look at it as well with the intention of protection. If you're using it as a way to try to reflect and bounce back things from a protection standpoint and defense standpoint, that is definitely to me more of a door um, than a box because you are deciding what's going in and out of an entire structure. Um, box is more of like an encased space to me. 
Um, so again, it really depends on that intention. Awesome. I'm so glad that I can answer that question for you. Um, and I'm so glad. Yeah, I always try to do as little much as I, and actually I prefer to get them from there because they always have fun stories um, and fun energies with them. Um, and usually the thrift shops have the more pretty looking ones too. Not to be vain. We are talking about mirrors, but not to be a little bit vain, but like they have that extra character. They give them that extra spirit. They give them that extra, that extra story when they have more of that ornate detail to them for sure. Go ahead, honey. Uh, sorry, but going off of what Vincent was saying about it being like a box, mm -hmm. um, which I guess is a little off topic for mirrors, but could the same also be set, said for like a painting that, that you could um, trap or bind something in it too? Or oh, it'd be a door all... to a portal <laughs> to the world of that painting? That is that, that is a thing um, in a whole, that's, that can be a thing in a couple different ways. That's a whole other thing. And that's actually quite controversial too. Okay, it sounds interesting. <laughs> yes, um, and bodily fluids can be used with that too, usually. Uh, what? How? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mixed in with your art and your paint. Oh, okay. Definitely. Oh, I oh, I think I get it. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, that's a whole other thing, though. Okay, any other questions <laughs> before we jump into more? I'm actually, I'm so excited that you guys are this excited about mirrors and you guys have this many questions. I'm super pumped. I I didn't, I didn't think people were going to be this intrigued with them. I love them. I love mirrors. I, I don't, I always have at least two on my altar. And we're going to get to that too on how to have them on your altar. You can use them um, for defense on your altar. You can use them for amplification on your altar, how to have them on your altar. There, there's just a lot. Um, yeah. I love, I've had some experience. I've had some, I've definitely had some like frightening experiences. I've had some terrifying experiences. I've had some very eye-opening and, and why I uh, like awakening experience with mirrors. I've had, I've had lots of different experiences with mirrors, mirrors. I like, I'm not saying that they're all like super, super dandy and like super, super fantastic. And there aren't some precautions to take with them because there definitely are. Um, but they, and we'll talk about that too. Um, but they just, they aren't, they just aren't this super evil thing that we try to talk about. Um, okay. So let's get back into the study guide here. Um, so magic mirrors as a tool. So they're both super simple and complicated tools of magic. They've been used for ages. Um, one of the most common ways that they've been used is actually through scrying, um, which is, I'm going to get into that a little bit more detail later, um, but it's a simple way, of, a specific way of div divination, searching for the truth. Um, they've also been used for finding your personal unknown and used as portals. Um, they've also been known to be used for protection spells to reflect unwanted energy back. Um, that was a common thing in Greece. And back to its sender spells. Um, they've also been used to keep entities out of your home or your sacred space as well. That is found all over Europe. Um, they can be used as an amplifier to your magical workings as well. And there's also a concept of the black mirror, which we will dive into later. Um, that is a fantastic tool for scrying. Um, I love the Mac black mirror because sometimes it's hard to just, it's hard to scry. Um, and it gets a little bit overwhelming to scry when you're also looking at your own reflection. So the black mirror kind of like helps tame that down a little bit. Um, so it is really a tool, like and I said, we're going to talk about a little bit more, but mirrors can be a super, super handy tool because um, like I said, they're super relatively easy to get. You can use pretty much any of them, um, but keep in mind um, when you're doing these to think about what type of mirror you're using when you're doing these workings. Some times it'll be okay to use a compact mirror. Sometimes you're going to want to be in more of a quiet secluded space and be using your bathroom mirror. Sometimes it may be okay to not cleanse and charge them or do any type of ritual work or preparation before you do your mirror work. Sometimes you can do it spontaneous. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes you do need to do prep work. Sometimes you do need to make sure that you've got yourself centered in sacred space. You've done some shadow work prior. You've done some journal prompts. You've got affirmations ready to go. You have, you know, all the things that you need for what you're going to be doing. Other times it can be super spontaneous and on the spot. So just follow your intuition and think about the workings that you're doing and what it's going to require. 
Um, you also have the ability, if you're trying to do some impulsivity, you can use mirrors that aren't your own. You can use somebody else's if you're at somebody else's home or if you're outside of your home. And like, you really just need to do some type of like self-love mirror spell or boosting love spell because you're out somewhere in public and you're having an anxiety panic attack and that's the way that you're going to use yourself to calm down so you rush to the bathroom and you're using their bathroom mirror you told that's totally like you can totally do that um but just keep in mind like i said with the working some that might not be a thing um because you're not going to have be able to charge that and cleanse that or do anything with that but it is something that you have the ability to do I don't know how many times I have been somewhere. I have been in a family function. I have, oh my God, being around family. And I literally dip out to go to the bathroom, to go and do mirror magic in the bathroom, to keep my mind sane and make sure I don't lose it on everybody in that room. Um, to like boost my self-esteem up because I was not told that my narcissistic abusive mother was going to be there. Now I'm forced in a situation with her and I need to just make it through until I can walk out of this room. So there's definitely ways that you can use this in times that you need for that as well, which is why I love mirror spells as well. And also a reason why a compact mirror can come in handy. Um, so is a mirror evil? People talk about all the time that mirrors are just blatantly evil. Um, the quick answer, like any answer to this topic, yes and no. Can it be used for malicious intent? Absolutely. It can be used for harmful malicious intent. I was talking about earlier about a hex. Hex is considered baneful, which is harm. Like, I have the intention of somebody having harm happen to them when I do that. I feel like I'm justified for it, but that is a, that is giving somebody harm. So, yes, it can be used for malicious intent, but any magic and any practice can be. All light magic can be used for malicious intent. Sometimes it's the most malicious magic out there. Um, and sometimes it has the most dire consequences and creates the most imbalance in the universe when it's used. Um, just like mirror, just like any other type of magic, mirror magic can be really useful. It can be very helpful. It can be very beneficial. It all depends on the intent. It all depends on the practitioner. And it all depends on how it's being used. It also depends on your view of good and evil. Not every single practitioner views that way. I don't. I don't even hear the terms good and evil. They're not something I even like to have come out of my mouth. I don't view the world in that way. I don't view people in that way. That's just not how I view things. So when people ask me that question, my answer is always going to be no. I don't think it's evil because I don't believe in that. That's not something that I believe in. So when it comes to this answer, you need to think about it. You need to think about what your moralities are. You need to think about what your magical practices are. You need to think about what your beliefs are and how you feel about this. If that, if you do believe in something that is evil, if you do think that this, you know, you shouldn't have access to this type of power, you shouldn't be doing this type of work. If you think shadow work is evil because you're going into the depths of the darks of yourself and that we're not supposed to have access to that, then that's fine. Like that is how you feel about that. And that's totally okay. But you need to decide how you feel about it. Nobody gets to decide for you if something is inherently evil or not. Um, but there are a lot of negative con connotations out there. This is a pretty controversial topic. I actually get a lot of crap anytime I come up with this, anytime I talk about this co topic, it gets really heated in discussions. Um, I have other witches that think that like I'm actually like shouldn't be teaching it because it's there's just so much negative connotation wrapped around it. I bet you you guys could even put more that I do not have in the study guide into the chat right now. I guarantee if you look at the study guide, there's probably more that you've heard of that I've completely missed. Um, but some of the common ones that you've probably heard are that people like to tell you that if you stare into a mirror too long, the devil's literally going to jump up behind you and he's going to be there and he's going to start doing contracts and deeds for you and he's going to like tear you off to hell. Uh, I think everybody's pretty much heard about the one where if you break a mirror, it's going to bring you bad luck for seven years. <laughs> actually not a thing. Um, breaking mirrors and using the shattered pieces are actually a crazy powerful amplifier to so many spells, especially binding spells and hexes and protection spells. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit later because there's one spell I did write out for you guys where you actually can do that and it's part of that. Um, some cultures actually even take it a step further with mirrors and they actually believe that breaking a mirror doesn't just mean bad luck, but it actually means an omen or death in a household. Um, some people say that your soul can actually become completely trapped in the mirror. You'll never be able to find your way out. Some people think you can do that accidentally. Some people think that there are creatures and beings that can pull you in there and leave, like kidnap you in there. 
the Fae are a common entity that are connected to that. That's super, super common. Um, and that the Fae can kidnap you into their realm and pull you into their realm through there. Um, there's the Bloody Mary myth. And so many myths that are like Bloody Mary. Um, that you can summon demons and vengeful spirits by calling them forth in mirrors. And then you're literally just kind of like stuck in the bathroom with them. Like I don't, all those stories are just really weird to me. You can though, I am going to put a disclaimer on this. Mirrors can be used for evocations and goetic magic. So it's not entirely wrong that mirrors can be used to summon demons. Um, slash, you know, goetic spirits and things like that. Um, because they can, um, but not in the way most myths are saying. Um, another very common one that I hear is that if you keep them by your altar, altar or near your altar, that you're going to allow evil spirits to possess you. Or if you have one in your room when you're sleeping, where you sleep, um, that mirrors facing out in our home are a portal into our home for demons and any other entity. Like I said, literally, honestly, the list could go on. Um, like I talked about before, like I know that some of these come from beliefs from, from, from culture aspects, um, specifically like concerning the Fae and other entities like that. Totally, and I totally understand that and I totally respect that. I feel a lot of these are literally just scare, ta they're scare tactics in my opinion. Um, specifically from Christianity to be able to keep us away from our true tool to ampl power, amplify our power and to be able to remind ourselves that we're divine beings ourselves, not just God and Jesus. Yes, they're divine beings, but so are we. Um, and it feels like anything that has the capability to remind us of that or give us access to that somehow is all of a sudden very evil, very negative, stay away from it. Um, so I really think that that's where a lot of that came from. Um, okay, I'm going to jump into the chat here, see if there's any questions. Um, yeah. Um, yes. I have actually had this specific argument. You don't even know how many times with my husband. So it's like, I'm the whole like, yes, I understand technology has some bad sides to it, but we can also look at like the positive side to it. Well, and he's the whole like, the government uses it to control you, which is true. But I try to look at both parts inside so like i've had this argument so many times that friend that phones are technically black mirrors and like you can use them for that and that they actually have a way to be able to be reflective and protecting you and all the things if you use that if you use them for that intention and i i totally agree with you vincent i've had this argument many times <laughs> i i try to find the plus side to it <laughs> okay i don't see anything else so let's jump back in so what is mirror work versus mirror magic so mirror work was a method that was actually originally developed by his inspirational teacher, Louise, Louise Hay. You've probably seen her quotations and memes all over the place, probably for, for personal development and like self-help. And she's all over the place for that kind of stuff. Um, and it was actually a method that she developed as a way of getting in touch with your inner self. Um, the primary purpose of mirror work is to develop self-love, self-care, and a much more meaningful relationship with others. Um, and you get that because of the increased self-love and self-care. Um, they go so hand in hand because um, when you care about yourself and love yourself more, like you're just way more mindful. You're just so much more mindful about your communication with others um, and like about how you're affecting other people. Um, so it's just, it really, really affects your relationships. Um, and how this is done is literally simply by looking in the mirror for a certain amount of time each day and really gently just talking to yourself. Um, and you do this, and by doing this, you end up fostering a much more compassionate, forgiving connection with yourself. Um, mirror work can actually really initially be incredibly difficult to do um, because you're exposing yourself to your inner critic right away. Um, your inner critic's going to jump out at you very harshly. Um, it's going to be hard to shut down, especially if you have like issues, any issues like I deal with when it comes to like perfectionism. Um, I have OCD, so that's that's a huge issue for me. Um, if you have any issues with like mood, um, I have bipolar disorder and BPD. Um, so like I, I do have issues with that. I mean, I also have DID, so that's a whole other thing when it comes to mirrors. And I use it for a whole other, I, I use it to try to connect to specific personalities when they're blocking me from memories. Um, which is another thing that you can do with it. That I'm not going to go into detail tonight. If you have need information about that, just DM me specifically. Because um, with me having multiple personalities, sometimes things 
things occur with one that the other two are not aware of, then I need to bridge that gap. Um, and mirrors are actually a way that I do that. Um, but when it comes to mirror work, they're really a way to develop a very compassionate relationship with yourself. But at first, like I said, your inner critic is going to be there. It's going to be harsh. It, it's going to be it's going to be really in your face because like I talked about earlier, mirrors are reflecting your perception of yourself back at you. So when you go to do this, like this is everything negative and in your inner critic about yourself that's going to be coming at you. And sometimes that's, that's really hard to hear. Sometimes some of my biggest, hardest emotional breakthroughs to work through are realizations that have never come from another person, but come because it's a realization and epiphany that I have maybe sparked by what another person may have said or an interaction that I've had with another person, but it's literally an interaction that I've had in my mind while I'm ruminating or doing shadow work or while I am processing things. And like, that's literally where those really big breakthroughs usually come through for me is when my inner critic is sitting there and really analyzing and going through a lot of things in detail. And then those big epiphanies will happen. And then you get to break free to that weekly like, let's do the work for personal growth. Let's feel that accomplishment, that motivation. Um, but sometimes, like I said, at first, it can be kind of hard. Um, unlike many other paths when it comes to inner growth out there, like this one, again, it doesn't take a lot of money. It's like really, really easy to do. Um, and super, 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 like it, it's pretty much free. It, it's pretty much free. Um, you pretty much need to be taught how to do it. You need to hear how to do it. You need to commit to do it. And then you do it um you can journal and write stuff down afterwards but if that's something that you simply can't do because of you don't have that accessible to you or you can't have it accessible to you you don't need to um so it is a very like it is a free way to do it's a free way to work on yourself which is super fantastic um mirror work also is a great conduct conductor for spiritual awakening because mirrors are seen as a symbol of truth and clarity um and they've been seen like that since very very ancient times um, we can go as far back as the Anatolia, and which is now known as Turkey, um, between 6,000 and 8,000 BC. Um, there are ancient mirrors that were made out of obsidian um, that they were using, and they we have like the the dot, like we have the knowledge that we know um, that they were using it for this type of work. They were using it for psychological purification. They were using it for integration and protection. Um, like they were using the mirrors for that. Um, when you use a mirror, you end up actually consciously accessing your inner layers, a part of yourself, and it removes these blocks. It really unties these blocks. It really moves them away so that reflection is pure, it's clear, and it's everything that, that you need to see in front of you, um, which then opens up to a very deep spiritual waking process. Um, like mirrors have been for most of my stuff. DBT has been a huge cornerstone, but my mirror work, my shadow work, and everything from my, from my magical, magical life tied into that, it never would have, I never would have had the effect that I had as quickly as I had without that. The mirror work was a huge amplifier to my mental health and to my mental health growth and that awakening process um, and bridging that gap. Um, mirror work also gives you access to your inner child because um, it creates that portal really to reconnect with that inner child um, because your inner critic is really going to, once that inner critic and that gatekeeper kind of goes away and that harshness goes away, you start to really reestablish this very deep, soft inner connection with yourself. Um, and you get to that very, very delicate part of yourself um, that has has just been sitting there and waiting for you to reconnect with them and to hold them and to love them and to cherish them and to allow them to feel and experience whatever it is that they didn't get to feel during that time. Um, and it really, really opens up that portal. And then in that space with that mirror, you're sitting within that reflective pool with that inner child. And you get to see the reflection from there as kind of like pointed back at you. It's really this intense mesmerizing connection that you get, um, which creates this very alchemizing, um, this alchemizing healing process as a, at a subconscious level. Um, and you end up really doing this simply just by gazing by, at yourself. Like it's just a very comforting feeling for your inner child to simply feel acknowledged. That's really kind of like Almost any inner child work I have ever done, that's almost always the first step. That's always the first time where your inner child starts to feel 
safe to even start to offer themselves to you is when they simply feel acknowledged and you actually see that they're there because they spend so much time being ignored. Um, so that's why that mirror work is so transformational with that. Um, we talked about how it creates a portal to your soul and all of that. It helps break through your insecurities, your self-resentments. It, it opens so much up with those doors. So how do you do mirror work? There's no official method to actually do this. There really isn't. Um, there are a lot of different like challenges out there. Um, Louise Hayes actually developed a 21 day practice like book that you can get. Um, she's got this whole book that breaks this down, but there really actually is no specific way to do this because it should be tailored to you and your needs. But the very fundamental principles of how you do this, and again, tailor this to your needs, tailor this to your inner child, tailor this to your spiritual awakening and what your reflection is showing back to you. Um, but you'll end up using affirmations. You need to be able to dedicate at least two minutes every day um, and a place where you can do it privately and not be disturbed. And you need to make sure that you feel emotionally okay to do this and that you're willing to let whatever come up, comes up and you're letting the feeling. So my one disclaimer with this is if you're having a really hard time and like you're really struggling in the throes of depression or if you're really struggling with like mania or if you're really struggling with grief or anything that's like very intense um, and it, it, you're just really, really struggling, this may not be the time to be doing this. Um, I would use other skills to get yourself out of it just a little bit. Um, I don't like saying the word out of it, um, but I would use other skills to realign yourself more to wise mind. You don't need to be completely centered in wise mind, but if you can at least get yourself into wise mind, a couple moments here and there, then I would say that you're going to be okay to, to try and do this, to help completely pull yourself into wise mind. Um, but if you like have no access to wise mind right now, and you're either completely dissociated and stuck into your reasonable mind, or you are in completely into emotional mind, um, try to find those moments, those pockets where you get into wise mind, and then you can kind of do this. Um, but because again, I'm not going to say you can't do this with, with mental health, with that with, with mental health. I I have my list. So if I can do this, making the like an official and have mental health, you can. You just have to be aware of like when you're doing it. Um, and then you'll also make sure that you want to try try and keep a journal so you can record any of your notable experiences. Um, I don't journal journal, I bullet journal. So if that's something that you do because you can't do the whole like write pages and pages and pages and you prefer to like list and like doodle and like do things like that, you can totally do this, keep this in your bullet journal. I have a whole section in my bullet journal for mine. Um, so here are the steps that you'll end up doing. You want to one, commit yourself to actually doing it. You need to think about the best time of day when you can do it because you need at least two minutes, at least two minutes. So if it's going to be in the morning, after you brush your teeth, you know, before you go to bed, if you have, you know, when you're with, for me, a lot of times it's actually like after I lay my son down for his nap and I know he's actually like sleeping because I'm probably overstimulated and like I need, I need some little bit of this love anyways. So a lot of times that's usually when my, I plan my time in there. Um, plus I'm not going to get interrupted by him. Usually my husband's going to either be playing video games or he even might be napping himself. So I know he's not going to bug me either. Um, three, choose or create your own affirmations. Why affirmations? Affirmations counteract any of the negative self-talk that runs through our minds. Um, they are a way to help us reprogram our brain and redirect our thoughts. Um, so you can choose some that you like. Um, Pinterest is a great place to find a ton of those. You can find them all over Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, all over social media. Um, otherwise you can create your own too. I create my own all the time, just depending on what I need. There's no right or wrong way to do like to, I mean, I guess there kind of is a little bit with affirmations. You kind of want to try to make them be very centered in like you already have something um, very present tense and like not like a question and wondering like you have it very affirmed, like very matter of fact with that. Um, but other than that, like you can't really do them wrong. Like everybody has the ability to create them. Um, you're going to want to repeat your affirmation as many times as you need and make sure you have feeling and intention behind it. That you actually believe it when you say it. Um, the universe knows. Like it just does. Like if you can't, if you don't have all that energy behind it, you don't trust it. The universe knows. Like it knows. Or the multiverse, whichever one you just prescribe to. I'm a multiverse person. I just usually say universe because most people do. And apparently, multiverse is considered conspiracy theory, which I recently found out. 
Um, then you can also, and then the next step is embracing any emotions that arise. So it's making sure that you understand that your emotions are going to happen. It's okay. And try to figure out what they're meaning. Don't judge them. Just experience them. Embrace them. Next is placing your hand on your heart. Um, I at first thought that this stuff like didn't matter. It wasn't important. It, I, it really does. It creates this very energetic link. It creates this very physical energetic link with yourself, the mirror, what you're saying. Like it just makes that physical energetic connection. Um, and it opens up and creates this connection to your heart space as well. I mean, with affirmations, it just really makes a big difference, that physical touch, that physical connection. And then seven is record your discoveries if you can. Um, You can even do memo notes if you want. So if anything pops up, just make sure you record it and take note of it. So that is mirror work. Next, we are going to be jumping into how to use mirrors magically in spells and rituals. Um, so there's so many ways to use them. You can use them to amplify your magical workings and spells and rituals in your life. Um, you can also use them for defense and protection um, in a lot of different ways. Um, so I'll jump in the chat real quick, and then we'll jump into the basics of amplifying, um, breaking them, bridging the world, scrying, all that stuff, and how you can use them. So we'll get into all that fun jazz. Where is, there it is. Yeah, I just got mirrors for all the altars in my house. I love it, Mrs. Adams. I literally, I always have mirrors on my altars. I use them for amplification on my altars and protection. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Um, but I love having them. Our voice sounds good to journal with too. Yeah, you totally can. If that's how you like, if that's if that's what you do, like, go for it. Um, you, there's so many different ways that you can journal. Um, my husband like. He needs to like let something out and like kind of like journal, but he actually does it by literally just drawing sacred geometry. That's journaling for him. And like that's part of meditation for him. Is like, and when he goes back and he goes to those like sacred geometry like drawings that he does, he knows what was going on at that time. Like he knows the energy he put into it. He knows why he did it. He knows the intentions he had behind it. Sometimes he even writes the intentions in with them. Um, so it really like there's so many different ways that you can journal. If voice notes is something that works for you, there's bullet journaling. There's so much. Ooh, I got octagon shaped ones. They were calling me so intensely. Ooh, I love it. Eight is a great number for businesses and abundance. So if you're like in that kind of realm, that might be why. Um, that that's definitely a thing. Um, that's super heavily myth in like Chinese, by the way. Um. And so, yeah, literally, there's not a single thing in my, at my business that isn't priced that will end numerolog numerologically in the number eight, because um, that's, that's literally how you get abundance and good fortune and stuff. So maybe that might be why that aunt of that was calling to you. Um, oh, I feel the drawing method. I like that. Yeah, I'm not a drawer um, at all. So like, I'm not a drawer at all, um, but like, I definitely get it. I wish I could be like, I wish, I wish I have all the like images I would love to put to paper. I just can't do it. But my husband, I didn't even, I, I didn't know he had this in him. He didn't either. He was like, this is a whole new thing for him in the last like two years, but he loves it. I can always tell when he needs it too. I'll be like, can you just, I can tell you need to, can you go draw? <laughs> it, it definitely is very cathartic for him, like doing the sacred geometry. Um, I also unintentionally have mirrors either in front of or, ah, I love that. Mirror, see, they called to you. I didn't know why I had them really at first either. Like, I didn't, I had to actually, like, I just kind of went with, like, loving mirrors for a while for a couple of years before I really studied and looked into, like, my why behind it and, like, started to really, like, magically work with them. Um, but, yeah, I, like, unintentionally, like, always had them everywhere, even though, like, I guess I'm not going to say I have bad body image because I don't. I'm actually really starting to understand, like, I'm very body neutral, um, which is a very, like, different kind of, like, new concept coming around, and I'm really starting to understand and grasp, um, and so, like, I don't like mirrors for that sense, but I love them for, like, magical purposes and chat. Um, so, yeah, I totally, yeah, I love them, and I like to keep my mirrors, by the way, behind in the back of my altar. I'll talk about that later, but I, I like to keep them in the back. And I'll tell you why. Um, you can't keep them both in back and front to try to like close it and make it a container. Sometimes I do that, but... Okay, so let's get back in the study guide, guys, before I get way too off topic. 
Um, okay, so I'm going to walk through you with you guys some ways that you can use them to amplify your magical workings and spells, how it actually amplifies your magic um, and protection and things like that. I may forget some. I probably definitely don't have everything here, and that's totally fine. Um, I had to cut myself off somewhere. Um, so if you know more, you can put in the comments. You can always send me a DM if you're watching the replay. Send me the information. I would love to know how to use them more. Um, and I'm always open to learning. That's part of being a mystic. Um, that's really, really, I really, 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 um, really embrace that um, with who I am. So like I said, I probably don't have it all here, but I will run through what I've got here for you guys. Um, and hopefully you can pull out some that you want to use and put into your practice. Um, so as I mentioned above about leaving mirrors on your altar, um, you can leave them on your altar for amplifying magic. I've talked about it a couple of times in class. I've mentioned it in the study guys a couple of places before. Um, I'm going to go into more depth a little bit later, but mirrors can be set up for any spell. Any spell that you have, literally, you can add a mirror to any single spell or ritual you do to significantly boost the power of each of the individual elements. You can add one for each individual element, or you can add one for your entire ritual and spell. I use mirrors all the time to amplify. There are people that like to use clear quartz crystals as like amplifiers for everything. They're amazing for that. Try replacing that with a mirror. Try using a mirror as your amplifier for your rituals instead of clear quartz or instead of salt or instead of anything else like that. Try using a mirror and see what happens to your magical workings and see what happens to your connections. Like they can very much amplify any of your any any of your workings. Um, think about what a mirror does. It literally absorbs what comes what comes into it and reflects it back and can bounce it back. That's a lot of power. Like that's a lot of power to amplify. Um, I'm gonna break down that that down a little bit more when we're talking about the altars in a little bit, like how that works, like especially as an example of a sunbeam and things like that. But like, that's really what mirrors do. Like they really, really significantly amplify. And you can do that by strategically placing them wherever. You can have your candles on top of them, behind them. You can have targets specifically on them. You can have sigils on them. You can have them placed in the center. You can have them with your offerings. You can have them with a specific element because you want that element to have an extra amplification or boost. You, I have even taken mirrors and I love it because they end up shattered eventually because they're in the freezer, but you take a compact mirror and you add it to a freezer spell, that amplification is like nothing else, especially once that, once that mirror shatters and you have those pieces in there. Um, but there's so, so, so many ways to do this. I personally recommend also, if you want to use this, you're going to get a much better amplification effect if you do it in multiples of three. Granted, Everybody has their own magical preference. Three is a significant number across a lot of different cultures. In one teaching of numerology, three is a pretty significant number as well. I also personally have an affinity for three. Um, I know I have some new students here tonight, but that's part of my OCD. Three is, three is my thing. That's what my rituals are in. That's what I do. Like I do three is my thing. Um, so that's also why I recommend it. But a lot of practitioners, a lot of practitioners that do magic with mirrors, they do things in multiples of three um because it's just it's just it is a very sacred number um when it comes to breaking mirrors people actually have a lot of reservations about this because we have that superstition that goes so far back and i'm blaming the church for it um pretty sure it is the church because julius yeah i'm gonna say it's yeah um but that you can actually like that they people say that you know breaking it's gonna be bad luck um but symbolically breaking a mirror actually represents you completely breaking through that energy, completely breaking through that blockage, completely breaking through whatever it is to your next level of enlightenment, to your next level of transformation. Also, when you break mirrors, if you think about it, if you're doing it from a hexing standpoint or a binding standpoint, or in a way that has like more harmful intent, and that you're trying to be a little bit more aggressive with somebody, when you are doing that with the intention, you are putting a lot of energy, swinging and going into that, or however you're breaking that mirror there's a lot of kinetic energy there's a lot of magic energy there's a lot of intention that's going in and hitting that mirror on impact when you're shattering those pieces and that's being infused into those pieces that you are then adding into spell work into intentions into things like that 
So there's a couple different ways that this actually is very, very significant for ampl amplification from a symbolic perspective, from a spiritual perspective and energetic perspective. Breaking mirrors actually is not a bad thing. It's actually a pretty good thing. Um, it can also help you symbolizing breaking bad habits and cycles. Like I love using pieces of mirrors in works for that, in, in spell work for breaking bad habits, for breaking out of generational patterns, for breaking out of my own cycles, for breaking out of like toxic patterns, for getting out of toxic relationships. Like this is a great one for, for relations, for stuff like that. For breaking like com bad communication cycles and patterns, I've used it for that, and it's really really helped with that. One of the biggest things that I do recommend, though, make sure you do this safely. Please, please, please don't do this in a way that you're gonna break yourself and cut yourself, and you have to go get stitches or go to the ER. Um, a lot of times, what I'll do is I'll either put it in a cloth bag and like throw it and like smash it that way, or it'll be in a towel. Um, but, like, I do it literally as safely as I possibly can. Sometimes I literally take the glass shards and I put it in a box and just, like, throw the box over and over and over and over again until I know that it's broken. Um, sometimes if I actually really, like, if I visibly want to see it and, like, I'm actually going to, like, break it, I make sure that I'm wearing, like, safety goggles and I'm somewhere safe and I'm not anywhere where my son could possibly get, like, hurt by any of the pieces or anything like that. So just please be safe when you're doing this. Um, but, yes, it can be used for that. Um, mirrors, when it comes to amplification, they're used as an amplification because mirrors can be seen as windows into other dimensions and also a window as to looking into you and into yourself without their knowledge because they can be used as a portal for divination. Um, they have been said to be used as a portal for like astral projection, which is where you get that like peeking in on people without their knowledge. Um, but they were known for this, which made them known as mirrors, known as tools for divination. Like in ancient times, this is what mirrors were known for. This is what they were known for, was tools for divination. Um, it was believed that their reflection was actually your soul. Like they really, truly, generally, like wholeheartedly believed that that reflection was your soul reflecting back to you, um, which is why it was used for scrying, because it was literally said that you were soul talking like you were talking to your soul self you were asking your soul self questions and your soul self has the ability to know those answers um because of this concept this is kind of where we got that black scrying with mirrors um because they wanted to make it less reflective so that um you don't see yourself quite as clearly um which makes it a little bit less of a distraction because like I said sometimes it can be a little bit distracting um seeing it on the on your mirror surface this is also kind of why you get the um fact that like a lot of mirrors back in the day were made with silver is because of vampires and they thought that literally like then they couldn't like that's why they couldn't see their souls like that's why vampires couldn't see their souls and like they couldn't see themselves in mirrors because they didn't have souls and mirrors were literally reflecting your soul um, so that's also kind of where you get that myth from too, just like a little side tidbit. Um, mirrors are also known to be used for scrying. Um, great, great for scrying. Um, it's actually, I'm probably going to be butchering the pronunciation, but it's katotromancy because, you know, every single type of divination has their own name and there's literally so many types of divination. I couldn't even like begin to list them all. Um, at some point, I'll probably try to do like a class or like a study guide or something about them. Because I mean, there's even divination for literally reading a loaf of bread as you bake it. You, there's divination for counting rice. There's divination for as the rain is falling. There's divination for ice. Like there's so many forms of divination. Um, but smears are fabulous for divination. They're one of like the first major tools used for divination outside of water. Um, and it's tech, like, like I said, katatromancy, and it comes from Greek, um, and is a form of mirror magic. Um, like I said, scrying is relative of clairvoyancy. It is a considered like, uh, out of the family of, you know, being an oracle kind of like they put it in that family of being an oracle. Um, that's where all that falls into. Um, and it refers to the practice of looking at an object to receive a message or a vision. Um, in scrying, the intention is to literally go in and see deeper, is to get visions or messages, is to gain inspiration and guidance and revelation and insight. Um, and again, you see the black mirror popping up a lot for that. 
I personally don't always use a black mirror. A lot of times I don't prefer to use a black mirror. There are some practitioners, they will not do any type of mirror scrying without a black mirror. So it's going to be up to you as well um, on what type you want to use, if you want to mix and match, if you only want to use one. Um, so it's really going to be up to you. And your own and black getting a black mirror is actually fairly easy to do on your own. Um, it's pretty easy. Um, you can make one super easy by yourself. Um, it is also known to be used in beauty magic. Um, so you can use it in beauty, beauty magic. You can use a mirror to amplify your self-love. You can use it to amplify, um, your self-care needs. Um, I have a spell in here for you to be able to use to do this that uses lipstick or chapstick because I don't wear lipstick, but if you wear chapstick, you could use chapstick and a bowl of rose petals. It's super, super simple. So you can read that in the study guide. Um, you can use it also for protection magic. So mirrors can be used for protection and binding spells. Um, so they send unwanted energy and deeds and negative energies back to their senders. Um, so think about it when a light hits a mirror. The mirror reflects, reflects the light back. It absorbs that intention. It absorbs that some of, some of that, that beam of light. It absorbs that reflection, takes it in, and then amplifies it and bounces it to the back. That's how a mirror does its protection. That's why I like mirrors so much for protection because I'm it's not it's not only like sending it back to you, it's amplifying it before it sending it back to you. Because like if you've ever like if you really really look at a sunbeam hitting a mirror, like that beam is so much more brighter, so much more in your face, so much more like I can't I gotta get out of it when it bounces off of the mirror and is reflected back to you than if you're just looking at it. Um. <laughs> and so it acts like that shield to reflect that energy back. Um, so there's lots and lots of different ways that you can use those. You can place them if you feel like somebody's attacking you. You can place one in every single window of your home if you need to and place it that way. If you want it just in a specific home, you can take the mirrors and you can place the mirrors outwards. Um, and that's a form of protection and you use it as a way to protect and like keep that, like I talked about as before, is like a door in and out. Um, it decides what can come in and it reflects everything back. Um, you can use them in lots of center back spells. If you have any type of center back spells that you're doing, add a mirror to it. Um, that will amplify it so much and that your results are going to be a lot more likely to be long lasting. Um, other ways that you can protect yourself, um, you can protect yourself in mirrors is if you feel like you're being threatened. Um, you yourself or your property or anything close to you. Um, you can place, like I said, mirrors in every window of your home facing out. You can place some mirrors um, if you want to, if you feel like you want to keep like your family and yourself like in and protected inside of a room, you can place the mirrors facing inside towards you and that will let, that won't let anything else come in. Um, otherwise, if you want, like I said, if you want the energy reflected back, then you make sure your mirrors are pointed outwards. Um, protection from lies. You have the ability to use mirrors to do that as well. Um, if you feel like you're going to be in a tough situation, or if you feel like you're going to be around people that have a hard time being truthful, you can literally just make sure you have a small hand mirror with you. You can hold it in your hand, um, and you can actually have the mirror side facing the person that you think is your opponent and is going to be lying to you. And it doesn't matter like if they know it or not. Um, it, it's gonna it's gonna do its purpose like it's gonna be like very very effective it's gonna let you know like it's gonna not allow them to even be able to speak the like to be able to lie I have used this so many times um and your mirror actually will kind of almost like give you an indication um the energy the energy wave kind of changes a little bit um between you and your mirror like when you hold it even when it's even when it's visible um when they are telling a lie um and it, it makes you aware of when you actually need to press those questions and call them out on it um some another way that you can do a super simple defensive spell is actually said that if you actually just fog up your mirror and while you're fogging up your mirror you recite an incantation um asking your mirror to reveal to you those who seek you harm and you will actually be able to describe the image of those who are seeking you harm um, so that is another simple super defensive spell that you can do. Um, also, kind of divination as well, wrapped into both. Um, you can repel unwanted energies um, using a mirror as well. And you can use this in any type of spells. Um, one that I have in here for you is you actually take your mirror and you put it in a bowl. Um, and you'll make sure that you're facing the mirror. You place something that represents whoever it is that's the unwanted energy. 
or if you think that somebody is cursing you or harming you, if it's, and you can have it be a photo, you can have it be a business card, you can have it be a pop it if you decided to go that far and make a pop it. Um, it can be an item that they own. If you went as far as like getting, you know, bodily fluids or hair or anything like that, or it can be simply just their name written on a piece of paper um, or a sigil specifically that you can that you created with their image in mind while you created that sigil and the intention for this. Um, so you can have that um, placed in front of the mirror that represents that um, and you actually create a mirror box with the mirrors. Um, it works with the same principle as if a single mirror. So you put several mirrors and you line it inside of the box. You use hot glue to put them in place so that they don't move around. And then once you're done, you place whatever that magical link is that you have for that, for that person inside of that box. You then seal the box. I also love to add black salt into it to give it a little bit of extra oomph, give it a little bit of extra power. Um, and then you keep them in that box. Um, and that is a way to repel their specific unwanted energy from you and to protect you from them. Um, there are times as well to where I will literally shake them in that box um, to kind of just like shake up their world as well. Um, another one of my favorite methods when it comes to making a mirror box is actually incorporating shards of the mirror that I smashed the hammer while chanting that person's name, you actually end up getting a super big release for yourself mentally and emotionally, and then energetically. Plus then that all that energy and that emotion gets added to that release, gets added to that spell, and it gets tied to those shards that are then in that box. Um, so it just really, really amplifies that, like I talked about before. Next, with when it comes to protection that I have in here for you guys is a suspended binding that I talked about before. Um, it's a way to, that you can bind using mirrors. Um, you place a picture of your target between the two separated mirrors. Um, like I said, I like to do this in a hallway. Um, and it symbolically is literally holding that target in like suspended animation and suspended space um, to where they can no longer harm you and their energy can no longer affect you. Um, other ways that you can do a simple binding with mirrors is you can get like a tube, like a toilet paper roll or um, a paper towel roll or anything like that. You create a small puppet and you put it in the middle of the tube and then you take two slits and you put mirrors around each end of the tube so that puppets trapped between the two mirrors. The mirrors are facing in. You paint the tube. <laughs> I apologize. Ooh. <clears throat> you paint the tube black. You wrap it with a black cord around it. You can leave it like that, or you can also put it in the freezer to create an extra biting effect. Okay, the next one, which is actually probably my favorite one, and the most aggressive one I probably put in here when it comes to protection using mirrors, is a hex, actually. Um, you really want to shake somebody's balance. You re like you really want to f somebody up. Like you like th this is it. Like this one's it. Um. So, um, what you do? You make sure you have a tag lock for your target. If you don't know what a tag lock is, I did two protection classes, and I talk about those in I think both of them, if not for sure the second one. Um, and they are already on YouTube. I also have like. I think it was like a 150 page study guide for protection um, that I can send you if you send me a DM. Otherwise, it's already on divination.com. So you can get that there too if you weren't at that class. But if you don't know what a tag lock is, like you, I have that information for you. So you can grab that. Um, but it's just, it's really just a personal item. A lot of times I like to use something that's more bodily, but it's a personal item. So you get a tag lock from your target and then you glue it to one the other side of the mirror. So you glue it to the opposite side. Um, if you can't get a tag lock, you can write the exact name and birth date of your target, which nowadays actually is pretty easy to get because of social media. And you write that on the back of the mirror. Um, I mean, if you don't really care if people know what you're doing and you actually have to ask about it, like, I mean, you might want to be subtle about it, but it's up to you. I don't really care. People, if they're going to ask me what I'm going to do, I'm going to be, I'm pretty authentic, so I'm going to tell them. And if they don't like it, they can voice their opinion. They are totally free to do that, but I'm still probably going to see what I want. <laughs> um, but, okay, so then next, what you're going to do is you're actually going to take that mirror with you and how you have it set up, and you're actually going to go physically, like, be in the same space as your target. 
you're then going to present that mirror to them and you're going to make them look at themselves. Um, you're going to try to make sure that you're complimenting their eyes and asking them to make sure they find some way, like you find a way to make sure that they're looking at their, their eyes in detail, like they're very much looking at themselves. Um, when they can no longer look at themselves and like they don't like feel better, like you arrange it so that the person like has to turn away. Like, so you make it to where like they have to turn away. Usually like I'll say something in the conversation to like redirect their attention. Now that I have a son, it's a little bit easier because he can be a huge distraction when I need him to be. Um, but other than that, like, he, I mean, there's so many ways you can distract people. And then you actually accidentally break the mirror. Like you literally like purposely drop it. And if it doesn't break when you drop it, like you step on it, like you do what you need to do to like break that mirror and you make sure that they see that it's broken. And that hex is now in place. You literally just had them participate in shattering their sanity. Um, that hex is pretty powerful. Um, I got that off of a blog, I want to say like seven, eight, nine years ago. I can't remember which one. When I remember which one and I find it, I'm definitely going to come back and edit and give them the credit for it. It's been in my spell book for that long. Um, I literally just can't remember where I got it from. I've used it a handful of times. Um, and with this, like, it, it, since it shatters sanity, like, it, it sounds aggressive, and it kind of is. It just, like, makes them question everything about themselves. It's not to, like, to make their, and then, like, lose their mind and, like, go insane. It really just makes them question their reality and about themselves, which, in turn, when you do that, you can have a lot of negative implications, like, just, like, domino effects in your life. Um, and, yes, so... This it's a little tricky to perform and like to get done because you need to make sure like you get in the same place as them and like you have that ability to meet them and like they actually see you get them to look in that mirror, um, which depending on the people, it's not that hard. <laughs> a lot of people actually do like looking in mirrors um, and if you make them think like they need to look in the mirror, they will do it. Um, okay, so I'm going to jump in the chat, see if you guys have any questions because next we're going to talk about mirrors and altars in detail. Okay, let's show. Ooh, there's a lot in here. Okay. I also, can you mix actual mirrors and electronic mirrors if you use more than one amplifier? I don't see why not, honey. I really don't see why not. Um, if that is what feels right for you in your practice, and like you don't feel like the energy is too chaotic or too much, that is, I don't see why not. Um, and I say that because. Of what we're going to talk about next um, with magic with altars because it can get a little bit like hectic and chaotic if you have more than one mirror for more than one purpose um so um i will talk about that a little bit more but or destroying illusion yes that's what i love mirrors for too are we going to have access to this recording so much information yeah so this recording is being recorded and then it will eventually get posted onto our youtube channel um when I don't know, um, our amazing director, Alex, um, she reviews every single one of her classes before they get posted. She just wants to make sure that we're not going to break any rules, um, because YouTube has really dumb rules, um, to make sure we're not going to break any rules so we don't use, lose any access to our channel, um, especially some of the topics that we talk about, like, we have to make sure we're not breaking rules. Um, so once she reviews it, then it'll get posted. Um, sometimes that can take a little bit, so just be patient, but yes, it will, like, yes, you will be able to have access to it. And yeah, you can definitely review it as many times as you want. Um, you guys can also always reach out to me DM. Um, I'm always open to that. If I don't answer in a couple of days, just bump your message. I get a lot, but I do typically always answer. You can always put questions in our divination chat too. If you enroll with us, you can always put questions there too. Um, if I can't answer, admins or professors typically can answer too. Um, and the study guide, you can go back to whenever you want. Yay! Honey, yes, your comment. About the old man sees the divination of using eggs. I actually use it often. Um, that I, every time I crack eggs, I pay attention to what's going on. The protection from lies. A mirror. Ooh, that would actually be pretty good. Yeah, that's actually pretty solid. I like that idea, honey. Um, I have a collection of hair and even some teeth toothbrush tips for certain people. Ooh, I like that, Miss Adams. I love it. They don't. They can think you're weird. Being weird is, like, being weird is everything, to be perfectly honest. Like, I've, 
if somebody like ever told me I was boring, I think I'd probably be more upset than if, like if somebody told me I was normal. I think I'd be more upset than if somebody called me weird now. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, so in embrace being weird is what I say. Um, go ahead, honey. <laughs> Actually, I have two questions, but first, I completely agree with the being weird. Embrace it. Love it. Being weird is completely awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, okay. With with the mirror binding at the two mirrors at the end of the hallway, yep. can you use like two small mirrors inside a uh like a rectangle box yep. to be like a smaller hallway? Yeah, I think that would totally work. Try, if you're going to do that, I would just recommend, like, try to, like, put, have the mirrors, like, up a little bit. So if you're going to glue them inside the box, have them, like, if you if you get what I'm saying, like, up higher on the sides. Otherwise, mm -hmm. if you're going to have them sitting on something inside the box, like, just sitting in the box, just try to, like, elevate them on something off the box so that it gives it more of that, like, animated suspended effect. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. Um, also, what about a two-way mirror? How would that work as far as basically anything you've already said? <laughs> you know what, honey? I honestly have never come across any type of work that talks about working with a two-way mirror. Hmm. So, um, I'm gonna have to get back to you on this one. You, you I'm gonna have to get back to you on this one. <laughs> Nothing. I, I literally, I'm... I'm gonna have to come back to you on that one. Another I one always for do. the uh, honey section, huh? <laughs> it is part. Yes, this is this 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 gets added to that one. Um, yes, I have new students in here. If you if you guys ever like stump me and I don't want to answer something, I'm gonna be fully honest. I'm gonna tell you I don't know, and I will go find the answer. And I always get back to you guys. Um, it may take me a little bit because I I teach a lot of classes and I get a lot of answers. I get a lot of questions, but I always get back to you guys. Um, so two lingers. Okay, I'm gonna have to look into this, honey. Okay. Also, for the for for, any, for anyone new here who doesn't know, she is also fantastic at researching. Like she goes down rabbit holes that are like to the depths of the earth and back. So she <laughs> finds good answers. <laughs> I, I yes. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm personally on the hunt for who the actual deities are of Atlantis, and I'm going down the second human reset, Tataria and Agartha. If you know anything about any of that, that's the holes I'm down right now. Um. Oh, and the Primus map. That thing's so fascinating. Um, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, for the protection from lies one, okay, another question, Katie. Would it work if you had like a floor length mirror behind you so it was facing them? Yeah, I don't see why not. Um, yeah, I don't see why not because I personally like to put things on my altar behind to amplify because the mirrors are facing absolutely everything with their altar amplifying and everything that's being amplified is visibly being seen inside that reflective surface. So yeah, I totally, I don't see why that would work. You could totally do that. I think that would work perfectly fine. And that's the brilliance of magic too, guys. Like you can definitely experiment with your own stuff. You have no idea how many times I have found so much stuff just from experimenting. Yes, can things go a little wonky and you end up with maybe some unexpected consequences? Sure, but that's also the beauty of this path and that's how we learn new things. So yeah, definitely. I feel like that should definitely work, Katie. Okay, let's jump back in if I can find it okay there it is so altars when it comes to mirrors and altars I've touched on it a couple times throughout class a couple times throughout the study guide I always have mirrors on my altars um I unintentionally did this I see a couple people in there in the chat did this um I just I just felt like it had to be there I don't know why it just was there it was there it, I had to have them there I've always had the affinity for mirrors, and then I did the research, and I, I now I understand why. Um, but, so you can have them there for both defense of your altars and protection. Also, there are some deities that love having mirrors there as offerings. Aphrodite, vain as hell, and loves having mirrors there to look at herself. She's not the only one. Athena, vain as hell loves having mirrors there to be able to look at herself so you can think about that too you can actually definitely have them there for offerings for deities um, so that's definitely a thing um but for a defense and protection purpose and ampl ampl amplification per per purpose let's talk about that now so to amplify your altar it's like i was talking about before 
It's like that idea, that concept of when a sun hits a mirror, what happens? That beam of light gets reflected back brighter as it's absorbed and then the reflective surface and then it's bounced back. That part where it's getting absorbed in and becoming brighter, that that's the effect and the energy a mirror can have to amplify your altar. It's going to take things in. It's going to completely absorb it. It's going to amplify it to be able to reflect it. So you can totally understand like that energy and all of the energy and the juiciness that it has to do with it. It affects your altar in that sense. So in order to use this with your with your altar and have that mirror reflect that, you can have it literally seated like on the top of your altar. You can have it anywhere, depending on what your altar is. Everybody has so many different structures for their altar. I personally prefer to have mine towards, towards the back of my altar. Typically, it's usually behind all of, you know, earth altar, all my earth offerings, because usually I have elements in my altars, almost always. I always, have, no matter if it's a deity or not, there's almost all the four elements are almost always represented for me. So typically, I have it in the back um, of my altar, and I have it there because it's going to be facing absolutely everything that's on my altar. It gets to see every single part of my altar. It gets to see me when I go to visit my altar. It gets to take in and absorb my energy that I put into my altar. It gets to take and absorb my incantations, my evocations, my prayers, my summonings, my spell workings, my rituals, my affirmations. It gets to see, take in, and absorb and amplify everything that I do with my space. That's why I like to have it all the way towards the back. It gets to take that all in and absorb absolutely all of it. And it takes that in and it completely amplifies it. You can also lay it down underneath certain parts. If you have a candle in each corner, if you have a candle in all four of the directions and you want to amplify all four of those directions or amplify specific elements, amplify an offering, you can take it and literally put it on, like put the mirror laying down and take it and put it on top of it. That's going to amplify that specific intention, that specific part. I have a mirror that's on my altar that is underneath my spell jars for my intentions for this year. If I, I know I'm new students that haven't been with me. I love spell charts. They're one of my favorite tools and workings that I do. And the ones that I do when it comes to both the calendar year reset and both our witchy year reset, I like they absolutely transform my life every year. And they're super important to me. I always amplify them with mirrors underneath them. Um so you can do that to amplify specific parts and specific things as well. So that's so many different ways that you can do that. Experiment with it. Figure out what's going to feel comfortable with you and your altar. Figure out how it's going to work. Be careful how many you put because it can get a little chaotic if you have a lot in there. So feel that energy out and feel kind of like how it's feeling for you and listen to it. Make sure, like I said, with any other tools, any other parts of your altar or anything that you're going to treat these mirrors like you do anything else that's set there. If you're going to cleanse anything with your altar, they need to be cleansed too. If you're charging anything else, they need to be charged too. If you're consecra consecrating anything else, they need to be consecrated too. If you like to program your tools and you're programming other things, you need to program those tools. You treat those mirrors just like everything else and with the same respect and reverence as everything else on your altar. When it comes to using a mirror as a defense on your altar, we talked about how when that sunbeam comes in, it absorbs and takes it in and amplifies it. Now there's that second part of when that sunbeam comes in and it starts to reflect and bounce back. That bouncing back, that reflection part, that's how your mirror protects your altar. It's by doing just that. It's taking it in and it's completely rejecting it, bouncing and reflecting it back. It's reflecting back those unwanted energies, any attacks that may be coming from you, entities, anything like that, that is what it does with your altar. Your altar is and should be one of your most, if not your most sacred place for you to be outside of the one that you have within your inner temple. This should be one of your most sacred physical places that you have. You need it to be protected. There's no reason why you shouldn't be. And using mirrors is a great way to do that with that bouncing back and that reflection. So how you can do this with reflection, you can keep it in the back 
like you have the other one facing towards everything so it can view everything and have everything in and it can take everything in it can monitor everything it can watch everything if you're going to do it that way my recommendation is add a sigil to that mirror specifically with the intent or room if you prefer to work with rooms sigils or rooms um to the mirror with the intent of protection that way, the energy is very direct. It's not going to get confused or chaotic with the other one. You're not going to have two different kind of energies bouncing off of each other and not quite knowing what to do. Um, it really does redirect. It also amplifies it as well. Um, and then it has your own personal intention as well in there. So if you are going to have it, like I said, in the back and facing out as if when you do the amplification, I just, I recommend adding that sigil to it. I, it just... It just, it helps direct that energy so much more. Otherwise, the other option is you can have it facing outwards. You can make sure that that mirror is just facing outwards. You can have one around all, uh, all four corners. You can have one around all, you know, boxing. You can even create a box with them if you would like, and one here and here and here and here. You can have one just at the front that is facing out to reflect anything unwanted from the very front of your altar, and then everything else is behind it. It really depends on your intention and how you want it to be protected. So you have a couple of different ways to do that with defense with mirrors in your altar. Okay, so now that we talked about that, I've mentioned it a couple times before. We also have black mirrors that can be used. We can't talk about mirrors without talking about black mirrors. We like literally just can't, simply can't. Um, and a black mirror is actually a very, very like popular tool when it comes to goetic rituals and evocations um, and with scrines. Um, it's also a tool that's really known for searching for your own personal unknown and for doing really, really deep shadow work with mirrors. Um, some really consider the black mirror to be a very controversial topic itself. Outside of mirror magic, a black mirror seems to be way more controversial than anything else. Um, and I think it's really because of that tie to the goetic magic, the goetic rituals, and you get that the tie to Aleister Crawley and Everybody knows what happens when you hear that name. <laughs> when you say that name, you use, use the Alistair Crawley's name in a room of people, of people, even in a room full of pagans, and you're still going to, you know the reaction that you're going to get. So I think that's also kind of why the Black Mirror kind of gets a little bit more of that hate than mirrors in general. Um, but it's 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 a very, 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 very powerful common tool to use. Um, like I said, it's because the mirror is literally actually like Black. Um, it is painted glossy black um, from the other side. You can still, like, you're still going to be able to, like, get your messages. You're still going to be able to get, like, a reflection through. It's just going to be a darker reflection. Um, and it's not going to be quite so easy to be distracted. Some people just, they couldn't, some people have a very hard time with the mirror being a traditional mirror because it's very distracting. And sometimes it actually can be a little bit too much um at first so they like to do the black mirror first and then they work their way up to a to just a, a traditional mirror and even some people can't do water scrying until they use a black mirror first um but it's a it's really 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 simple and easy to do um when you use it um typically this is meant for like longer sessions um, because it is a darker reflection, it's going to take a little bit longer for the answers to come through, the message to come through, and for you to be able to fully see what's happening. Um, most people, when you're using a black mirror, they actually see like their faces start to morph and change, and they see completely different images coming into the mirror. Um, and that's also kind of why it's typically a longer section so that you can give that the ability and the chance to happen. Um, so most of them, for example, are going to be like 20 minutes or longer for your sessions with the Black Mirror, um, unlike other ones where it's just a couple minutes. Um, but like I said, most people typically, like you can expect to actually see your shape, your face kind of start to morph and change and change face, change shape. Um, but it's like I said, it's really, really, really ideal for being able to get in touch with with yourself. Um, how you make a black mirror is really, 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 really easy. Um, you can pick your mirror. It's uh, totally up to you. It can be one that you already have at home. You can go out and find one specifically for this. Um, we already talked about how I feel about like what you do if you find a mirror. Um, it's going to be up to you. If you want to cleanse it, consecrate it, program it, all up to you. Um, and your path and your practice that I talked about earlier, you know, just judge the energy. Um, so what you'll do is you want to turn over the picture, the, the, um, the mirror, you're going to want to take like off the backing 
Um, usually you can take it off with like a butter knife and it's gonna pry it's gonna pry off pretty pretty nice, pretty easy. Um, and then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna want to clean it. Make sure like icy propocol usually works pretty well. Um, you're gonna remove the glass and clean it with glass cleaner or like icy propofol or like a lens cloth and like really, really clean it. Make sure it's really, really clean and then you're gonna dry it off and make sure it's completely dry before you do anything else. Um, Cause you wanna make sure you don't have any dirt or anything else like traps and like specks of dirt trapped like in the glass um, because you're gonna paint it. <laughs> Cause you, so you're literally gonna take and you're gonna paint the back of the mirror with black acrylic paint. Black acrylic paint. Um, it's gonna take several layers, um, depending on you and how thick you're painting and, you know, the mirror and the glass and all of that and how big it is and things like that. Make sure that you allow it to dry completely before you add a new layer. Um, and you do this until, you know, you feel that when you're looking at it, you can still kind of see through it, but it's definitely like a darker, it's a darker reflection. Um, it's, it's definitely a darker reflection. Be a, be, you get to be the judge of that, really, when it comes to that. Um, once the paint is completely dry, you're going to take everything and reassemble and put it back together. Um, a lot of times I do this, like using, the, it's literally just a picture frame. Like it's literally just a picture frame that you can do this with too. Um, but you can take it, you put it back together, and then you have your black mirror. Literally, that easy. That easy. It's literally that easy to make a black mirror. Um, and if you want to add any decorations to it or anything like that, you certainly can. If you want to add sigils to it, room to it, you certainly can. Um, crystals, anything like that, you totally can do it. Um, I prefer to use round mirrors, um, because it's just a little, like, it's just easier to hold. Um, and, like, the perfect and ideal, I don't want to say perfect, but ideal size for a black mirror is small enough that, like, you can hold it. And you can place it at like arm's length and you can still clearly see your face. So you don't need something like, like super, super big. Um, you don't need like a big mirror, but you also want to make sure that like you can still super clearly see your face. And it's not going to be like a hassle to be able to hold it at arm's length, arm's length away to be able to do that. And it's not going to be like, I have to like sit here and like really trickly like try to get my face in this mirror. Like you want it to be something easy for you to use. Okay. The last topic that we have to talk about is protecting your mirrors. So I'm gonna jump into the chat, see if you guys have any questions before we before we talk about last topic on um, the last part of class. Can you use a black mirror for deflecting and a normal mirror for amplifying or vice versa? I've done both. Yeah, you totally can. Um, I've done both. I prefer to use my black mirrors more for scrying though. Um, but yeah, I've done both. I've definitely used um, black mirrors. I typically use black mirrors for more for the protection part um, because they can absorb more. Um, and then like when they're bouncing back, like they're just bouncing back so much more. Um, but yeah, you totally can do that. Um, I've done both. Um, but like I said, I prefer to use my black mirrors for scrying or for mirror work even too. Um, I prefer to use them for that. Okay, any other questions, guys? Okay. Mm, okay, so protecting your mirrors. If you choose to use mirrors, as with any magical tool, you're going to want to treat it like any other magical tool and protect it. So you're going to want to cleanse it, consecrate it, do any of the other things that you do to protect it. So if you like to put sigils and runes on your tools to protect them, do it. If you like to charge your tools with crystals on top of everything else those crystals are used for you want to use it for that if you like to cleanse them um you know every day every lunar cycle every month every season however you're going to treat these just like you do any other tools that you use um they're just like any other tools they should be honored respected and venerated the same way um so let's talk cleansing first you can cleanse them by smoke cleansing um you can cleanse smoke cleanses um are used to you know get that negative unwanted energy out of the space um, they can be, you, you can use, use smoke cleansing for any tool, any object. Um, some that are great to be used for mirrors, you know, we sandalwood, sage, frankincense, lavender, and jasmine. Um, make sure that you're using the, you know, the garden sage. I'm not a big fan or supporter of using white sage. Um, but if that's your practice, you, like, again, it's your practice. Um, but you can definitely use garden sage. Um, and you can choose from any of these options or you can make your own and make sure you can also add any resins or anything else that you would like to add to it well as well. 
You can also cleanse them with essential oils. You can take a few drops of either sage essential oil or sandalwood or frankincense or cypress or lavender or rosemary or ponchatouli or even sometimes I like to use dragon's, dragon's blood and then you can literally use that to wipe it on there while you are cleansing it. Um, you can make sure you have intentions um, behind that as well. You can even chant and use mantras like you do with any other tools. If you need more information on how to like cleanse and take care of your tools, I go over that in my protection classes too. Um, so that I, I go over that there too. Um, I do a whole chunk about cleansing in there. That's I think that's almost all of like the first class actually, if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I taught that class, um, but I think it's in the first one. Um, other ways that you can cleanse are using your moon or your sun, like you can with everything else. Um, so you want to make sure you put your mirror out to be exposed to the fresh air, the sun, or the moonlight. Make sure it's a super, super powerful way to get any negative or unwanted energy out of there. Um, I really like the sun when it comes to mirrors because you have just so much amplification. It takes so much in. Um, you can also use any other celestial body that you would like if you want to be connected to that body and that zodiac sign. Um, and just try to make sure you leave it exposed for at least four hours. Um, typically, if I'm doing something like this, the sun, I'll leave it out for like the entire period, but make sure that I bring it in before sundown so that it doesn't like get the mix of that moon energy. If I'm using moon, I will almost always do it for that entire lunar cycle. So it goes out at night um, for that, for the three days of that lunar cycle change, I should say more specifically. So it'll go out that first night and then come back in when the sun comes up and then it'll go out the second night and come back in when the sun goes up. Um, comes up and then go back out the third night and then come back in and the sun goes up. So that's a lot of times what I do when I'm cleansing things um, with the moon. You can also just simply draw a pentacle on it. Drawing a pentacle on your mirror is a super easy way to protect it from being possessed. You're being taken over for any, any type of negative energy or unwanted energy. Um, and it can also be a protection for you. Um, you can also create your own protection sigil or ruin to draw on it as well. And you can draw on it with a dry erase marker you can make it more permanent you can do it with lipstick even if you want to to add like some beauty and love and self-care intention behind it you can draw on it with you know some salt water you can draw it in there with um essential oils there's so many different ways that you can do that um another way that you can really cleanse and take care of your mirrors is actually sprinkling salt water on there Salt water is boosted with both protection and purification properties and cleansing properties, which makes it a great way to really take care of your mirror. Um, so you can just sprinkle some on there and make sure that you wipe it off. And then you can also place protective crystals around any of your mirrors. Crystals of all kinds can be used for protection, um, like black tourmaline and smoky quartz. Um, and you can add their protection to any of your mirrors by placing them in front of them or placing them near them and around them. And like I said, treat these mirrors like you would any of your other magical tools. So any other way that you protect anything, any other way that you cleanse or take care of them, you can certainly do that with your mirrors. Um, your alternative mirror that I talked about before. So if you just can't get past the legends, if you just can't get past the superstitions and the beliefs, if you just can't quite get past that, water has almost always been used as an alternative to almost all of these methods of magic. Water was the first reflective surface that we were able to see ourselves in. So a lot of our superstitions and our lore actually revolve around that and revolve around what that reflection truly means. Um, it was even said that back in the day that if the water rippled while you were looking into it, that that was actually bad news because whatever was happening to you um, would actually, like the mirror self was actually most likely to happen to you. I mean, I'm not quite sure why the ripples were bad. It sounds kind of fun, but I mean, maybe I can see like ripples coming through to like, shake up and wave your life but i mean that's a good thing there's when things grow and change um but so if you really can't get past it but you want to start kind of working with these magics you can use water water is a way that you can access these because water is a reflection it ends up being a little bit more gentler as well because of what it conducts and the energy that it connects to um and it can also connect you to some zodiac energies a little bit more um, so if you would like to prefer to do it that way, you certainly can. You can definitely use water as an alternative surface. So I've talked about everything that I want to talk about when it comes to mirror magic and mirror work. Um, and really, like I said, it's it's really deceptively simple, but it's also very in terrifying. It's exhilarating. It's empowering. There's a lot to it, but there's also not a lot to it. And it can do so, 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 so much for you. 
It helps facilitate and deepen your spiritual awakening. It adds to giving you clarity and inner illumination. It really reflects back to you how you see yourself not how the world's seeing you. And that's really, really why mirror magic's so great is it really, truly really makes you, it forces you to go in. Um, and because mirrors aren't really commonly used and they're not really commonly talked about, like I said, when I talk about or bring it up, I don't get met with very nice things that people have to say. Um, so make sure that you experiment with this. Find the best way to incorporate mirrors into your own craft so that we can break this. Like people can stop like, hanging on to this narrative that everything's so evil and negative to use and we can start using things in these most brilliant and beneficial ways that we can use them. Um, so yeah, experiment with them. Figure out how it's going to work for you because it might not work for you the way it works for me. And I teach that every class with every topic. But this one especially, because like I said, you're not going to find a ton out there because people just don't, they, they're having a hard time breaking free of those chapters. But I love them. I absolutely love them. Okay, does anybody have any questions, any comments, or anything else while we wrap up here tonight? Whew. If you keep coming to my classes and you're new, by the way, the Dr. Pepper is normal. I kind of live off of it. Oh, thank you for telling me that. I love it. Thank you. I, I love doing this. I love teaching, and I love doing this. Okay, guys, thank you so much. I don't see any questions or anything else. Thank you so much for being here with me tonight, you guys. Um, if you do have any further questions, oh, honey's hand went up. Go ahead, honey. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to find the button. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> um, about the picture thing real quick. Yeah. Will you talk about that during any part of something you have planned or? I can see if I can sneak it in. Otherwise, I can always just do a blog post about it. Awesome. Okay, I'll make a note here. Thank you. I, I've kind of been really curious about them uh, since I read this manga, Cats at a Louvre. It's about this cat who can go in and out of pictures That's in the Louvre. Louvre in Paris. <laughs> it, it, it's, really, it's really cute. It's really emotional and it's awesome. <laughs> I love anime so much. <laughs> but I love manga and anime and all of it. <laughs> Oh, yeah. okay let's see oh Freya thank you this is my first class awesome I'm so glad you liked it if you did please send us a DM so you can roll and you can get all notifications and I teach two times a week um I teach a lot of topics I teach basics I teach dark goddess deities I teach divine masculine devotionals I summon deities for you guys I teach about ascended masters I have a series on working with demons um I don't even think I've done them. Is that all that I've taught? Is that all I teach? Oh, I do moon ceremonies here for us. I have a new one starting on pantheons and practices. So definitely, definitely check us out. I have a lot that I teach. I love doing it. Um, and we have amazing oh, other professors too. Amazing professors that do great classes. We have a lot of new ones coming in about um, Latin spirituality coming up. So I'm really excited to those two coming. Go ahead, honey. What did I forget? I was just going to say you also do... Uh holiday slash oh, Sabbath yes. classes. I do a lot of those. I have one that I did on the Hero History of Santa. Like, I love stuff like that. So, yeah, I have a lot of stuff. Yeah. Oh, yes, I have to plan Austera. And I'm very sorry, guys, I did not do the Virgo moon, especially because of me being a Virgo with nine, nine in my freaking houses. And that's, that's my freaking moon. I just, I'm going through a lot in life right now. And I just emotionally wasn't there to hold you guys in sacred space. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to bombard you with that. But thank you so much for being here with me you guys, tonight, you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Sunday, I am teaching Loki. Next week, I think I'm doing how to cast a magic circle. I can't remember. Don't hold me to it. Check our event schedule. Um, also, come and check out my business and my site. I do a lot of content there for you guys. I also have some workshops there that you guys can come and check out too um, that are on sale right now. So take a peek at that and come check out classes with us. Okay, have a good night, guys. Thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. And I love that you chose to spend your night with me. Let's see. Stop recording.